Okay, so I did my science fair project of the, uh, which candy is the most acidic? And we got six, seven types of, six types of candies. Mm -hmm. We got six candies. We have six types of candies, and we put them. Warheads were ill. I didn't like them. And they are the most acidic. They are harder to melt, plus they are super sour. It means their pH is higher, and pH is like defining how sour it is. Jolly, oh. no, wait, yes, Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers were second, like most of them. They were sour, but high, like a bit, like like a ten percent good taste. Sour Patch, I like, but it's just acidic to some people. I like the Sour Patch, but. They are the third most acidic. Sweet tarts, even though I had sweet, I put it like a neutral. Mm -hmm. Since I have my own opinions of taste. And it was like very hard. So I was like, hmm, it's neutral. Hershey's are my favorites. And that makes sense because they are the least acidic and the easiest out of all of the six to melt. So, and um, our Snickers is a uh, oh, so. second place in like most of it. And, and our hypothesis was correct. And I knew the warheads. And when we tr all of us tried the warheads, and none of us liked it. And that's my um, project. Hope you liked it. Hello everyone, my name is Dylan Gonzalez, Cartagena, and my entire sharing my science fair project titled Those Cherry Rebent Mow Grow on Bread. The hypothesis can generally can be used to prevent the growth of the bean mold. The easy question, what is the bread component? It's a nutrient product made for missing and baking flour, water, salt, yeast, and other ingredients. What is a celery? It's a nutrient of green vegetables that has long fibrous stalks tapering into leaves that can be eaten ran or used for cooking. What is mold in the name Give it, given to different tribes for fooding colonies? Bread mold is a quietly akin or fungus that from when the spores from the fungus eventually reach the surface of the bread. When the spore find the bread surface, it will start to consume the nutrients and nurturing in the bread to grow. The material used where bread, plastic, ziplock bags, tapes, markers, and pair gloves. A ruler and magnifying in glass, paper, towels, and water. The product drills consisted of peppery three simple bags with bread and celery and one control sample on used bread using pear. Of glove the bre bread signings were placed in speak look plastic bags along with 11 cuts of clean celery, celery that had been 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 that had 
then wash it and dry it and the bags where then seal it with tape the monkers where you said to the depth TV and sample this sample sample the experiment what started on March 13 20 of April 10 the celery presented mold grow before the bread on April 13, 2020, the first sample present mold on the side of the breast size of April, April 15, 2020. All samples presented mold on the sides of the breed size mean the control safe did not present any mold. I proved that the hypothesis was fell celery does not prevent the growth of bread mold the bread presented mode on the sides that had the celery whole the experiment died provide useful information in the form of the control saying the shorted the selling the bread signs in the end are think bag and elongated its shelf Life. Hi. Walking water. Today my experiment is gonna to be about walking water. In this experiment, you have to guess if the water in the glass will move to the other glass with a paper towel. Investigation question: How can you move water from one glass to the other without pouring it? Can water move from one glass to the other with a paper towel? Hypothesis. My hypothesis is that the water will be absorbed by the paper towel and it will transport to the other cup next to it and an empty glass, glass will, will be filled with the two colors on the, the uh, on side. Results. When you place the paper towel in the glass and it starts to absorb some of the water, the water starts getting stuck and starts going down the other side into the empty glass. This process is very slow. It took 24 hours for the water to move at the end. 100% of the water moves to the other glass. Bye. So first, we got three types of bubble gum to get this um, project done. Then, we got one piece of each bubble gum package. Then, we, well, my mom blowed up the bubble gum to see how, and then we messed it bit to see how like how wide how long it was and here we put one of the measurements the first one and then the second one to see so we can like compare the the biggest to see which one then we did it all again with the trident juicy fruit and and now our conclusion is that Huba Buba can build the the bigger bubble gum than Juicy Fruit and Trident. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Is using social media rather than study. Our research 
problems are, how much time do the Palermo Private School students spend studying, and how much time do the Palermo Private School dedicate to using social media? The hypothesis is most Palermo Private School students spend more time using social media rather than studying. Our materials are paper, computer, Google form, internet, and a data table. Our steps are read the conference articles, make a poll, send the poll to the Palermo Private School students, make an analysis and conclusion. The question was distributed throughout a Google form to ask the Palermo Private School students the study questions. The questionnaire was answered by 43 students from Palermo Private School from 3rd grade to 8th grade. The 39.5% of the PPS students said that they use social media for one hour, while 23.3% use it for six hours, 16.3% express that they use social media networks for two hours, and 11.6% said that they use it for three hours. Interestingly, 39.5% of the PPS students said that they use it, said that they study for one hour, and 23.3% for two hours. That 14 of the PPS students said that they use it for three and four hours. It seems that the PPS students study more or the same hours than they they are connected to the social media networks. Given these findings, the conclusion is negative. Given these results, it will be important to carry out studying, exhaustion, research where the hours of studying can be related to the hours of using social networks with academic achievements. Thank you for your attention. Bye. Vamos a continuar con mi hipótesis. Vamos a hacer mi hipótesis de mi proyecto de la máquina de vapor. De y aquí tengo la gráfica de cuántos minutos se tardó por el mililitro de agua que tenga. Si le pones 10 mililitros, se tarda 2 minutos. Si le pones 30 mililitros, se tarda 5, 5 a 4 minutos. Si le pones 50 mililitros, le pone, se, se tarda 8 o 7 minutos. So, ¿Eso significa qué? Significa que el menos agua, más rápido y más se mueve el aspa. ¿Por qué? Porque el proceso de ebullición empieza como... Empieza por evaporarse. Antes, si le echas menos agua. Sí. Ah, eso está interesante entonces. Se evapora y después, cuando el agua que está por adentro, que está evaporada, mueve el aspa por el viento que hay. Bye. Ok, so. Okay, so this is going to be my experiment. It's the styrofoam and acetone thing that you put it in. And well, my hypothesis was that it was going to disintegrate. And I wrote because acetone is a very strong liquid that can dissolve a lot of things, including styrofoam cups and fingernail polish, which is hard to remove to no, remove so that's what I wrote. Um, so that's my hypothesis. So now I'm gonna see if it's really true. All I have on me right now is a is a styrofoam plate because you know what's happening. So let me see. Let me see if it disintegrates. Cool. No way. It's like acid. Yeah. It's like acid. Mm.
<laughs> Again. It's too big. Good enough. No, no, it's not. Because it bends, remember? That is so cool. The way it does that. It's turning like to a squishy or something. Yeah. Okay, so here's why. Styrofoam dissolves in acetone in a similar way to sugar dissolves in water. It's, it is a physical rather than a chemical reaction. The air in the, in the foam bleeds. And because styrofoam consists mainly of air, when it dissolves in acetone, it completely loses its structure. Cool. I didn't know that. So I guess my hypothesis was wrong. Not the first time, but yeah. So that's it. So my experiment is about the birthday paradox. The birthday paradox is a hypothesis that there is a 50% chance of two people having the same birthday on a group of 23 people. Is this true? I interviewed 47 people, two sets of 23 for a total of 46. Since I knew two people are identical twins, I decided to add one more for a total of 47 people. If I should have a pair in 23 people, maybe I get two pairs in 47 people. There is a 50% chance of a match if the birthday paradox is true. So I interviewed 47 people in different group. Group one, immediate family. Group two, cousins in Puerto Rico. Group three, cousins outside Puerto Rico. Group 4, music school. Group 5, teacher. Group 6, classmate. Group 7, random people. To complete my 47 people, I looked for 4 baseball players. On the internet, Roberto Clemente, Roberto Alomar, Carlos Correa, and Ivan Rodriguez. And then I, and then I made a um, chart of months and dates to see if there were any pairs with stickers. So the birthday paradox holds true. I got more than expe I expected. Three pairs of people with matching birthdays. Albert Lady Laundry. What's the name of the laundry lady? Iris. Muy bien. Who else? My neighbors, Fetty and Terry. Mm -hmm. And Lizzie, Lady of Supermarket. And now we to show my grandfather. So does the birthday paradox so the hold birthday? the elves true? Yes. My project is about on how to stop a can from exploding. On can number one, we had to shake it for one minute and open it. What happened? It exploded. On can number two, we also had to shake it for one minute and tap it on the top and then we opened it and it also exploded. On can number three, we also sh shaked it for one minute and we snapped it on the side and it also exploded. Um, my hypothesis was that it would explode because I didn't think that there was a way to stop it from exploding. And there you can see that there's no way on stopping a can from exploding. Hi, my name is Alejandra. My science fair project is apple oxidation. My hypothesis is when an apple is cut open, oxygen turns it brown. My question, number one, why do apple, apples turn brown when you cut them? My second question, how much time does it take so it can turn brown? I took eight pieces and put them in 
pure water, salt water, honey water, sugar water, lemonade, orange juice, apple juice, and pure lemon. The ones that turned brown faster was pure water, honey water, sugar water, and apple juice. The salt water, lemonade, orange juice, and pure lemon didn't turn brown because it couldn't because it contains cit citrus acid. Prevents. It prevents it to turn brown from turning brown. So I took my hypothesis. My hypothesis was when an apple is cut open, it takes from five to six minutes so it can turn brown. My hypothesis was apples contain an eosin apple oxidation. It works when the cells keeps it alive, the apple. It keeps the apples alive. When an apple is cut open, the cells break, and that's what it makes it turn brown. Yeah? ...are so small that you can only see them through a microscope. And they have the ability to spread from victim to victim. Bacteria are single-celled organisms that can reproduce both outside and inside the body. The, there are 70 types of bacteria in the mouth. Most of them happen naturally and durable part. Bacteria can con contribute to dental to dental the decay, gummy diseases and infection. Bacteria live everywhere in the mouth, including germs on teeth, on the tongue, and in cheeks, and in back of the throat, and but, but the thing, the, the king of the cake is the bacteria in, identified as tooth decay. Tooth decay happens when sugar containing food or liquids goes into your mouth. There are good and bad bacteria. Bad bacteria can cause throat infections and through a toothache. So or make you poop. Puke. Um good bacteria, for example, E. coli that pro that produce ru rudiments. Some bacteria can be good for your health, boosting plant feeding or food making and planting and plant cleaning. mouth bacteria so so question which type of food produce the most bacteria but my hypothesis that is that I think bacteria in the mouth is mostly formed when one eats food that has a high amount of sugar
And and these are the materials. The the first materials you need five five per per made pantry dishes with agar, five cotton swabs, apple uh, some an apple, potato chips, bread, and a taffy taffy can. Um, toothbrush, toothpaste, and water, and a small sticky label. Materials is that you have to do, yeah, the materials are five per pre petri dishes with agar and five cotton swabs, apple potato chips, bread, and a taffy candy. Then you need toothbrush, toothpaste, water, and a small sticky labels. <clears throat> First, what I used. Okay. Using the marker on, on the first dish, using the marker, you have to only have to write control. And it's a little not bacteria. So then step steps two. All you have to do is brush your teeth with water. And I've done it like four times. Okay. Third, then you, you get a, a, a cotton swab and, and you stick it in your cheek. Then they put on the second dish. On the second dish, you spit it and then you put and then you put it in. Yeah. You spit it, spit it because it needs saliva. On the second dish is the apple, which is turned into fungus. As, as apple, it turned rotten and it's fungus. On the third, and that's the third step. Second step, well, third step, that's what I've done on the third step. On the third step, I did the potato chips. They they're a little rotten, and then on the bread, it doesn't have bacteria at all, but it only has a little bit. But in the taffy candy, it had a lot of bacteria because because that could cause a lot of cavities, and and it has most bacteria. You can get your Necesitaré sal, agua, moldes de plástico y de último colorante y una jeringa. Primero hay que agregarle la sal a un recipiente hondo. Después de unas hojas, el agua se evapora y crea pequeños caminos por los 
por dónde viajar el colorante cuando se lo regas. Pero no se queda quieto, busca otros caminos donde todavía no hay colorante y se expande en todo el castillo con una manera muy científica de pintar. Y así termina mi experimento. Because of the constant in business and stores during the coronavirus pandemic, I had to do a modification to my project. This project required a specific digital skill with 1.0.1 in in increment to weight these paper clips. Since I could not buy the digital scale, the procedures procedure was altered from way to counting the paper clips to find the difference if any I use a total of 400 paper clips for this project. The magnet was exposed to normal temperature, freezing temperature, and heating temperature. The f when the magnet was in normal temperature, out of the 400 paper clips, 339 paper clips in the plate. It collected 361 paper clips in total. When the magnet was exposed to heat the number of paper clips picked were 335. 65 paper clips remained in the plate. When the magnet was exposed to freezing temperature, I, it picked a total of 392 paper clips. A magnet exposed to heat experiences a reduction in its magnetic strength. Conversely, conversely, when the same magnet is exposed to low temperature, its magnet property is enhanced and the strength increases. Hey Christina, today we're gonna do the volcano eruption for the science fair. We didn't, we couldn't get play-doh or clay, so we had to use this water bottle that we cut the top off. And, and now I'm gonna show you how to make it. And we're gonna be using hot water for this. So take a, a half a cup of water and you pour it all in. I'm gonna grab this. Just so I don't spill it. Pour it all in. And then use four drops of shampoo. I mean soap, not shampoo. One, two, three, four. Next, we're gonna be using food coloring. There. Now mix it up. Now we're gonna be pouring in some vinegar and we're gonna be un cuarto because we don't know how to say it in English. And just pour it all in. Then a teaspoon, two teaspoons of baking soda. So one, two. That's weird, wasn't it? Oh, it is. It's just slowly doing it. Whoa. Whoa. I think because it's a water bottle, so it was taking a little bit more time. But still, we did it. Now let's see what happens if we add a little bit more. But let's wait for this to entirely drip. That way it won't get clogged and won't, it won't do it. It's still going. <laughs> See it? It's still going. Let's try. I'm not gonna use too much because I don't I don't wanna know. So oh no, it's not entering. Wait. Ooh, it's going even more. Now let's see if we put even more. So, yep, it's going on. That's the experiment. That's all I'm going to show you because it's all we did for the experiment. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye, Christina. This afternoon, we will be doing a homemade lava lamp. The materials are baby oil, food coloring, and water.
First, you add almost until the top of baby oil. Now you add the effervescent pills. And we have a lava lamp. Yeah. Ta da that's my experiment. And water doesn't mix with oil because water has a polar charge and oil and oil doesn't have a polar charge. So oil is attracted to other oil molecules that have the same polar charge. Hello. Hi, this is my science work project. My name is Giovanni Santiago, and I'm gonna explain to you can acid rain do damage? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, my hypothesis is yes, the acid rain may damage the structures and nature. We will see if the experiment. Let's see. The materials. Three limestones, lemon juice, and a little bit of vinegar, and the water bottle. Okay. Now we have rock A that we're gonna we're gonna pour lemon juice on it. Rock B that we're gonna put vinegar on it, and rock and rock C that we're just gonna put water on it. So. We can start by the lemon juice. The vinegar. And the water. Observation. Uh, day one observation. Uh, the first day, they didn't change shy, size, uh, color, or texture. They were all the same, as you can see. Day five uh, observation. They didn't, how you, how you can see here, A hasn't changed size. Color, yes. Texture, no. Number B hasn't changed size, color, and, and texture. And C, it hasn't changed size, no color, and no texture. Next slide. Observation day 10. How you can see lemon exposed, uh, the, the rock number A what has changed its color to around the rock, how you can see, and has cleared the rock. Still 
some the same size, but it has changed color, but no texture. It has changed. Number B, vinegar exposures. Um, how you can see from here, it has a little bit of tiny holes. Um, now, the, the holes are, are closed, how you can see. But in the rock, there hasn't changed size. Texture, yes, and, and color, yes. This is same water explosion. It hasn't changed, uh, not color, size, or, or texture. So, our, my results and my hypothesis was right. The results allowed us to conclude that the acid rain proves change to rocks and clear water mountain and the results in the active of the hypothesis. I'm going to show you how the acid rain uh, it changes the our structures. Okay. I'm gonna show you how the acid changes our structure. How you can see it can it can slowly distort structures but and our forest. Stop polluting. We can't. We will have more acid rain coming. So our structures, we don't. Our structures, we will get destroyed. Uh, we will have no houses. And now it's the best time to stop polluting, contaminating, and save the planet and us. Thank you. This is my science fair. And bye. Title of my science fair project is called The Amazing Guinea Pig. The question is if the guinea pig could complete the maze with sight, smell, or memory. My hypothesis is that I think the guinea pig will complete the maze with smell in less time the memory and sight. are a guinea pig, a carrot, tape, an orange crayon, and cardboard to make the maze. This is how we do the maze. Now let's see if my this is correct. I think the guinea pig will pass the maze faster with smell rather than memory and or, or sight. And I'm going to be using this paper and that timer to see how fast it can go. First we're going to go with sight and we put this orange tape that resembles the color of a carrot. So he couldn't finish the maze with sight, but now we're gonna do it with smell. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna spread this carrot on the tape so he can smell it. So the smell was way much better. 
So now we're gonna do memory. Three, two. At first they're getting big, they did not complete the, the maze by memory, but because he kept on sleeping. But the next day, they tried it again and this time, he did it in faster time. These are the results. For a side, he did not complete it, and we waited for six minutes and two seconds. So anyways, if we would have made it, it would have been the fastest time. With smell, he did it in two minutes and 11 seconds. And with memory, he did it with one minute and one second. The reason is that the guinea pig did it in less time with memory. So that means that my hypothesis was wrong because I thought he was gonna do it faster with smell proves that a guinea pig could be trained by using their memory. That was my science fair project. I hope you enjoy it. Analysis. Elephant toothpaste is an exothermic reaction, which means that it produces foam and heat. The, the G's used in each trial acts a catalyst and breaks down the hydrogen peroxide into warm water and oxygen. The water combines with the soap and produces the foam. Hydrogen peroxide has different strengths. If it is 20%, it means that it's very, that it, in very 100 millimeters of it, there will be 20 millimeters of pure hydrogen peroxide. And the bees the rest is water. Hydrogen peroxide has a lot of oxygen in it. So when it breaks down, the oxygen push, pushes upwards to be released and that what makes the foam come out so quickly. The conclusions. I watched videos on it and it, my mind was blown because I thought the whole idea was funny but interesting. Chemistry I learned the com I learned that the main point of the experiment was to make hydrogen peroxide decompose quickly. I also learned that the catalyst is the main ingredient because if we don't have it the project will not work. Lastly I learned that the hydrogen peroxide has a lot of oxygen. And once the catalyst is added, the peroxide breaks down and releases all of the oxygen. Overall, the most difficult part of the project was deciding on the how much hydrogen peroxide was not was enough to make the experiment the experiment where life is should. Hi, my name is Adriana Cabrera, and uh, I will be presenting my science fair project. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to find, my question was, which brand popcorn pops best? And uh, my hypothesis was that I predicted that the Orville Wren batteries would be the best because it claims a little less than the others. I think that if it claims a little less, then maybe it's like better than the others. Um, I rated the popcorns 1 to 10, and the filler popcorn was 7 to 10, the Act 2 was 9, and the Orville Run Bench was 10 out of 10 because it was the best. So my hypothesis was right, it was the best, and my materials, my materials were popcorn, a bowl, obviously a microwave, pen and pencil, and coffee. Um, you need coffee because um, when you eat a popcorn, then and you eat another one like straight after that one with a different brand you will taste the same thing as the other one because um you will just taste the same and uh because of that you need to drink coffee and the coffee helps um for you to like not uh taste the same thing so it's basically that's why you need it um
Yeah. My name is Sandra Cobo. My experiment is about water conductivity. These are the materials that I use for experiment. Nickable water, normal battery, lead bulb, cables, paper clip, cup, one teaspoon of salt. So voy a poner esta media en el agua que tiene el detergente de surf, que el detergente de surf es en, es en polvo. A ver. Déjame buscarte. <risa> y ahora la segunda la voy a poner en el que tiene oxiclin, que oxiclin es líquido, así que... Y el tercero, la tercera, la voy a poner en Clorox, que es el que yo creía que iba a funcionar mejor. A ver si mi hipótesis está correcta. Ok, so no hicieron, no hicieron ningún tipo de reacción. Ahora lo voy a mezclar para que con la mejor el sucio y el agua se está ensuciando un poquito. Eh, voy, voy por 18 segundos. So, ya sabemos que se está limpiando un poquito porque como, como escribí en mi... No sé qué era. Ya, ok. Porque las moléculas del... del las moléculas del... Las moléculas de todo tipo de... De detergente. Este cambia el agua con el sucio, así que sabemos que está funcionando porque el agua se está ensuciando. Y voy para el próximo. Mira el sucio, mira el sucio cayendo. Bueno, no se ve el de ahí. Bueno, hay un sucio cayendo de la media hacia la parte de abajo de la... Ya. Hay que esperar como... Dos horas, una hora, no sé. Como una o dos horas para ver si se limpiaron y cuál funciona mejor. Y eso es todo. Okay, so now I'm going to see the result and I'm going to go to the lavamano, sink. to the sink, and I'm going to rinse. rinse them and like move them around to see which one ended up better and to see if my hypothesis was correct.
So I'm ta I'm taking the surf the surf one out. So it didn't clean that much. See, it was it was darker, so it did clean a little bit, but it didn't clean as much as I thought it would clean. So now the OxyClean one. So that's how that one ended up. Still really dirty. Okay, so now the OxyClean one, if I can reach it. So, I honestly don't know which one took less um, de la mancha off, stains. of the stains off. For dirt. Yeah. But, like, they both didn't clean very well. So, it's up to the Clorox to see if it cleaned. Wait. So, this is how that one turned out. And then... So, which one do you think cleaned? Which one? It's surf and it's OxyClean. Okay. So this is surf and this is OxyClean. I think the surf worked better than the OxyClean. Now let's see the Clorox. Wow. Oh. So that's not gonna come out. <laughs> um, the dirtiest of the waters is probably the surf one, so maybe that's why, like, that's a way to tell which one cleaned better. Well, take them out after we're done here. Yeah. So, you can so this is how there. that one turned out. So, in result, in put them in order. Okay, this is Surf, this is OxyClean, and this is Clorox. So, so, this one is the Surf one, and I think it cleaned better, so I'm going to take Hello, I am JT and I'm about to talk to you about my hypothesis. The ratio between the base and height are important to the stability of a building. I will test at what height the building becomes unstable. I predict that with a base of five units of, and heights between 13 and 20, the building will lose stability. In order to test on my hypothesis, I had to build two items. This 12 inches high top Lego tower and this shake table. Once I had those two items, I just put the tower in the shake table and tested it out. We started with the experiment with the building at 6.5 inches high and with a 3x3 three three base. When we shook it, it the results were it stayed stable. We now put the building in 12 inches high, just like you see right here. When we shook it, it fell way, it fell pretty easily in the shake table. This time the tower actually fell completely stuck together. We took out this top part 
and turned it into 11 inches high. We shook it and it we went to experiment number six. It was 10 inches high and it fell the same number of times. Experiment number seven, then it was nine inches high and the base three by three and it didn't fall at all. So then we thought the limit of the stability was a nine hint. In conclusion, the maximum of height of this building instability is nine inches. If it goes any higher than that, it will fall. Hello, my name is Eugene and this is going to be my science fair presentation. Hypothesis. Is hand sanitizer better than hand soap to prevent COVID-19, influenza, and other viruses? The materials used in this video are hand soap, hand sanitizer, water, alcohol, etc. Under, a mic under the microscope, coronaviruses appear to be covered in pointy spires, giving them the appearance of a crown or corona. Hence the name. Beneath the crown is an outer layer of the virus. It's basically made out of this stuff called lipids, aka fat. <laughs> Now imagine that the coronavirus is a buttery dish covered in buttery fat and you try to wash your buttery dish with water alone. But that butter is not coming off the dish. That's because you need some soap to dissolve the grease. Soap and alcohol are very, very, very effective against dissolving that lip liquid coating of the virus. Conclusion, hand soap is better at killing viruses like COVID-19 or coronaviruses, influenza, and other viruses than hand sanitizer. But that's not to say that the hand sanitizer can't help. So yeah. This is Apple Science. All right, uh, so we go uh, from the five sections, hypothesis of materials, uh, procrastinate results, and uh, conclusion. All right, so, so first we go hypothesis. I believe uh, that lemon juice uh, will work uh, best uh, in uh, delaying the browning process uh, in apples. Uh, this is due uh, to the uh, ascorbic, ascorbic acid found in uh, lemon juice. Could uh, other acidic acids also work? All right, so now we move on to the materials. So one, you're gonna need water, salt, lemon juice, obviously, white vinegar, a red delicious apples, or whatever color that you want, an eyedropper, or you could just put it drop by drop, and to my favorite, a knife. And then, now we move on to the proceed. Now we move on to the procedure. One, cut the apples in uh, four slices each. So just go. Then we go to two. Place uh, one slice uh, in uh, each of uh, separately marked uh, corners. One control uh, and uh, the other three with the solution. Then three. Feels uh, like the Tootsie Pop uh, owl. Uh, take uh, pictures of the apples uh, right uh, when they're cut. Make sure the three slices are marked uh, clearly. If uh, that's it, uh, and if they're not clear to marked it uh, clearly, then that's no good. Uh, and then four. Wait for one hour for browning to take place, because. Uh, technically, when uh, the browning starts, uh, um, uh, the browning literally is just the sugar from the apple just turning brown. It's still safe to eat, but kids don't like it, especially when the apple turns mushy. Uh, five. Take uh, pictures uh, when see which apple browns the most. Important. Write uh, down uh, the results uh, to compare uh, them uh, from a uh, least uh, brown to brown. Brownest. It is uh, not uh, a racist joke. Uh, report uh, these five steps uh, uh, three times and record your results. Because uh, you need that evidence. If no evidence, uh, that's no good. Uh, um, Alright, so now we go to the results. <gasps> After one hour, we find uh, that uh, uh, the control 
piece of the apple that was not treated with any three solutions had it the most browning obviously because it has no other chemicals uh, that allow it to uh, to stop browning or to accelerate browning uh, so it just goes at the normal pace uh, um the piece uh, with the least browning was the one that had lemon juice in it it appears uh, to have no browning next to the salt water then the white vinegar then the leastiest uh, is uh, the control piece uh, second first lemon uh, plate lemon juice uh, that was the least browning second is salt water that is easy then third white vinegar then fourth place con control that has nothing in it then the conclusion <laughs> once uh, added uh, the apple slices uh, uh, the some Ferric acid, aka vitamin C. Um, the lemon juice creates a barrier between oxygen and uh, poly scalar oxygen. I don't. I never learned how to read properly. Until the lemon uh, has a evaporated that is a uh, process of uh, liquids uh, being uh, too hot uh, then uh, going up in the sky you know the water cycle uh, you know that's uh, you're more knowledgeable than I am uh, Finish. until uh, the lemon has evaporated it prevents uh, the apple from browning in uh, conclusion lemon juice works the best the topic of my science fair project this year was Can household trash become a renewable energy resource? Unfortunately, due the, to the restrictions imposed by the COVID-19 lockdown, I was unable to perform my experiment since I was not able to purchase or receive the, the required materials on time. I did do extensive research on the topic and will present the project in a different way. The hypothesis I posed for my project was that household trash that contains hydrogen and methane gas can provide electric energy to a household. The materials I plan to use for this project were the following. Three empty and clean plastic bottles, three latex balloons, a measuring cup, permanent marker, disposable gloves, three plastic spoons, blender, biomass samples, which were going to be mashed banana, uncooked vegetables, and leftovers, mushrooms, funnel, distilled water, washing liquid, shipping tape, measuring tape, notebook and pencil. The procedure was the following. I was going to first wash and dry the plastic bottles. Using the marking tape and permanent marker, I was going to label each of the bottles with one of the biomass sample names. Using the marker and rule, Ooh. I was going to use a small horizontal mark two centimeters from the top of the mark bottle. Before placing a balloon on each of my bottles, I had to check if they had no holes on them. After all of my materials are clean and ready to go, I was going to put on the disposable gloves to start preparing my biomass samples. The way I was going to prep my biomass samples was by using a blender to smash one cup of each material. I would also add half a cup of mushroom to each sample because mushroom accelerates the decomposition of matter. After all my biomass samples were prepared, I would have taken my gloves off and washed all the materials that were used, like the blender. Then I would have filled each bottle with distilled water to the mark I had previously made. Finally, I would cover the mouth of the filled each bottle with a completely uninflated balloon, securing the balloon with a couple of strips of shipping tape. The bottles would be placed in a well-ventilated area. I was going to choose a corner of my terrace. 
Each day for one week, I was going to use a measuring tape to measure the circumference in centimeters of each balloon. As for this part, I will record the date, time, and measurements in my notebook to show how each balloon grew in size. In this section, I will give you a short summary regarding my background research. In order to find more about this topic, I went online and used the following keywords to search. Obtaining energy from household trash, gasification, organic waste, biomass, waste to energy, and methane gas. Waste to energy is the process of producing thermal energy from an organic waste. Dead plants, rotting food, wood chips, sawdust, leftover crops, nutshells, and paper products are all examples of biomass which are natural materials or organic matter that can be used to make energy. Household trash is normally composed of both solid and organic biodegradable material. For example, households normally have banana peels, rotten vegetables, and fruits in their kitchen trash bags. As these organic materials are decomposing, breaking down, this produces methane gas. Anything that has organic matter and bacteria will release methane gas when it expires. Methane is the primary component of natural gas, a common fuel source. It is considered a greenhouse gas, like carbon dioxide. This gas can be repurposed to produce energy for the household. Food that gets thrown out ends up in landfills, where it gradually rots and releases methane a strong greenhouse gas. Globally, if food waste could be represented as its own country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter behind China and the US. Even though I wasn't able to perform the actual project, I would guess that by my biomass composed of mashed bananas and mushrooms would have been the one that would produce more gas. This means it would be the bottle with the balloon that was more inflated. I think this would be my result because during my research, I found a lot of information regarding how bananas produce a lot of ethylene gas. My other two biomass samples were going to have more vegetable products, more leftovers, pasta, and other leftover items, and we're not going to have fruits, which are known for producing more gas. To conclude, I think using our own trash to produce our own electricity is definitely in our future and could be very well be the solution to our dependency on other products such as gas and petroleum to provide electricity to our homes. This is a very important solution that we could start implementing in Puerto Rico since we all learned recently after Hurricane Maria that we needed to start looking at alternative energy sources to provide power to our homes. There are existing ethanol conversion facilities that can utilize landfill gas to develop gas electricity projects. We just need to bring one to Puerto Rico soon so that households can produce their own renewable energy source from the trash they are producing every day. and I'll be presenting my science fair project and I'm from eighth grade and my hypothesis was that the chewable medicine capsule are absorbed faster into the bloodstream than gel capsule and tablets. My questions to this project were how does the delivery method of a drug changes how quickly it enters to your bloodstream? My other question was, does the pH in your body matter? So I did some background research about this, um, this theme, and there's something called a gastric acid, gastric juice, or sometimes known as stomach acid. So this gastric acid is used in the complex process of the digestion, of the digestion. 
This acid breaks down the food in which it is consumed. Then there is a, a process of absorption that comes from the broken down foods. The nutrients including carbohydrates, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, fats, proteins, and other nutrients are separated from the waste and passes through channels in the small intestine, intestine then into the large intestine to be fully digested. It would take about six to eight hours to be fully, um, fully digested, depending on your pH in your body. The small intestine absorbs most of the nutrients and go and goes into the process to go the to go to the bloodstream. When the nutrients go um, goes out. The in the small intestine, the lining of a small of the small intestine is covering a tiny microvilli. Microvilli is a it's like cells that like try like it's like cells when it, they go like into the bloodstream. When nutrients are absorbed into the microvillus, it's the same thing. They're entered, they entered into the blood, in the blood capillary, which is circulating the bloodstream. It's like things inside the blood, inside the bloodstream called microvilli or villus. When swallowing a pill, it passes down the digestive process. The only, the one listed that I listed before, the pH in your body does matter because it relies on your metabolism, or the metabolism relies on your pH of your body. The pH scale has three main parts, acidic, neutral, and alkaline. The acidic diet is bad, well, mostly bad. If you don't take care of your body and it continuously is in an acidic diet of your pH system, it may lead to serious diseases and even or death. death. Neutral diet is in between acidic and alkaline, nor bad nor good. The alkaline diet is mainly a healthy Diet according on consuming high vitamin and mineral food and helps with some diseases. The pH chart is divided into seven uh, into 14 categories 0 be the acidic and 14 be the alkaline, and in between is 7 that will be neutral. So I'm going to do this project to see how am I going to how how am I going to prove that pills are fastly the most fastly digested in mattering in your pH. So I'm going to do that by the liquid presenting the the levels of the pH value. So I'm going to do pH 3, pH 7, and pH 11. That pH 3 will be re represented by orange juice. Orange juice is slightly acidic because um, the high, um, high citric acid called um, vitamin C. 7 would be pure water. And, and number 11 would be milk of magnesia because it's alkaline. It's not that acidic and it's, it's not acidic. So my materials for this project would be orange juice, wa pure water, milk of magnesia, gel pills, tablet, pi um, tablet pills, 
and trouble pills and a stopwatch. The kind of medicine drug I'm gonna use today is ibuprofen, as other known as Advil. Oh, and um, and clear and a cleaner container to check and put the the liquids and the pills and then time it. My procedure will be four easy steps, three times. So you're gonna get all your materials together, and you're gonna prepare your prepare your um, clear containers, and then you're going to um, pour one liquid in each container, and then you're going to put the the pills inside each container, but the chewables, you're gonna crush it first, and then you're going to um, to put a little bit of, a little bit of the liquid in pre presenting the, the beginning of the digestive, digestive system that starts in your mouth. So you start chewing and then saliva. Saliva is, is also a representation of the pH in your body. So I use the same liquid to um, crush it up and then I pour it into more liquid so I can time it. So then when I when I crush them, I, uh, I put liquid in each in each container and then I'm gonna time it. Each time, like in between, I'm going to be stirring representation of the movement in, in your, in your, inside your body, in your stomach. Hi, my name is Gustavo Santiago, and I'm going to be teaching you about the, the effects the cigarette can cause on a plant. Um, next slide. The purpose of this is to see if the cigarette can cause a bad effect on the plant, which we will try to see in this project if you can find out. Next slide. The materials are topsoil, a lot of cigarettes, small plastic flowers, water, and a smoker assembly. Next slide. Two ideas at one. If the plant that will sell the cigarette is not going to have a problem, it will be fine and it will and it will the cigarettes are going to damage itself. What are the planters in past? And the other one is to see, to show my father that smoking does help, the smoking causes damage and help him quit smoking. Next slide. Here, before the experiment, we will bury two seeds at the same time. Then we will have to put it at the same time directly so we can judge it easier to see what is the problem with the cigarette and the plant. Next slide. Um, the, one of the plants will be normal, we will put it in water and in direct sunlight, while the other plant here will be placed here with a smoker assembly. My dad will have to smoke from it every day to see the plant and what it causes from it. Next slide. The average, now here we've, do, we've done it, then we've done the smoker assembly, now we're gonna compare. The average one of the comparing is 12 to 14 leaves. The size is approximately one feet, the color of the leaves is green, and the top soil have hydrates. On here, on the other cigarettes are going to have the same things except the cigarette, then to see it. It's most helping the planet will be observed to see its reaction, so it can be easier to manifest. Plant A, and this is day five of the, of the project. Plant A will be will, will only be re re receiving um, this is the progress compression. This is plant A, the plant A will only receive sunlight and water. B, the additional component smoke. They will also have the same thing, but they were also, they're also normal, but the plant B has less pepper and doesn't have the same size average as the plant A. Next slide. This is day 10. Day 10, um, the plant A still seems, ha still seems grown and still seems normal. While the plant B is longer dead, has no leaves, has no peppers, and we've tried to revive the plant, but I couldn't. 
the light blue is plant A, the dark blue is plant B. Um, both at the initial were the same size. In the day five, the plant A got taller, the plant B got lower. In day ten, the plant ten was the. In day ten, the plant B was taller than one, but it seemed that. So, in the next slide, again the initial they didn't. And now here in the observation proof, in the initial they didn't have proof. In the plant A, it had two more fruit, and this one had one. Now in day ten, the dark plant, since plant B was dead, it only kept with the same single one. Since now plant A had three more, and it kept reproducing. Next, next slide. In healthy appearances plant, they were both the initial 10-10. In day 5, the plant B started decreasing. And in day 10, the, the plant B started dead. It was already dead and couldn't be any more reduce of function. So we still had to go with keep on in plant A and still kept growing. Like also, if a plant has smoke on it, it can cause the pepper seed to not grow and die. This is my conclusion that the cigarettes should not be used in its illegal way for plants and humans. Thank you. This is my science fair presentation. Stuart? In foods trapped more bacteria on contact. On there, contact. There is minimal difference between the control fruit. fruit Petri dish and between and the dropped fruit both in the both in tile tile and asphalt 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 after, after being dropped and picked up in in five seconds. Okay. Hard, hard candy do to its dry, dry surface did not didn't allow doctor back bacteria to clean, clean the and, and thus did not grow communication significant significant bacteria in any in any situation ah. after being dropped and pick up in five seconds bonus read it this one this is, is why, why we must be careful during the, the pandemia pandemia because the moisture we breathe Allows, allows allows progenius pathogens, pathogens to to clean and what longer, and live longer like could like covid covid 19 prepare 12 straw plates contain the nutrient agar step 2 on gloves step 3 Tro uh, One watermelon piece of the uh, clean floor and start the timer. Remove after five. Seconds. After five seconds, swab. swab the watermelon with the swab. Step four. Remove the top of. Petri. Petri dish and gently run swap back and forth in a zigzag pattern on the, the surface of the agar of the agar plate put the top of the Petri dish back on the label tip and label step five repeat the test with another piece of watermelon. Step six. Repeat and test with gummy bear. With hard candy. Twice. Step seven. Change type of 
Ground. Mm -hmm. Ground, pavement, and? Do the test. The test. Twice with each item. Step eight. Swap the items that have not been dropped on the ground. Create two control. Create two control. Uh, Agar. Wait. H. For each item test. Place the petri dish in the same location. Step nine. Even. Fo step nine. Photograph. Photo photograph. Plates after. 24 14. hours. 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 And, and count. Bacteria. Bacteria colonies. Real life. At, at teach each at each home time. time point six species of pieces of watermelon six pieces of hard candy sterile sterile swaps sterile gloves timer prepared nutrient agar agar sterile plate notebook to record the results is the second is the five second rules of truth true investigation questions does the type of food change results i will does the type of food change results I will try to find out if it is safe to eat food the from the floor five seconds after it hits the floor. Does it does the type of floor change the outcome during my res research I found other variables variables that could affect my experience experiment and does the results how does the condition of the floor where the food falls affects the amount of, of bacteria on the test of food. Also, does the food you know, contain bacteria before it falls the to the ground? And what kind of food will pick up more bacteria? Moisture. Moisture. Is an important factor in allowing, allowing disease, disease causing bacteria.